Okay, it's the 26th of September, it's 5.14pm. The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. I just had a sneak peek at Barbie the Redback Spider. I guess what, we've got another egg sack? It's going to be egg sack number nine, and at the moment, it's right at the time when she's making it, so let's take a look at that. I've got to be a bit careful, little sister is right near the top here. Okay, uh, this can be a little timely process. I've seen it done in about 20 minutes. It's a very vulnerable time for the spider because the spider is sort of stuck doing one job. And I dare say she's a bit surprised that I've just had a peek at her and I've caught her just as she's laying her eggs and she weaves the egg sack around the eggs. It's actually quite a miraculous thing to witness. Remember, this is egg sack number nine for Barbie the Redback Spider, who was, um, let's just call it, born the beginning of 2020. And female Redback Spiders can live for three years. Always remember, we have to be highly educational. This is the log that I've kept of Barbie and her egg sacks and the date she laid them. We've been through the winter break. We're well into spring now, and there you go, I've just written down here, egg sack number 9, the 26th of September. I'll tell you what, it was a freezing cold night last night, we've just had a sort of flashback to winter temperatures, and at this time of day, and we've just passed the equinox, our days are getting longer, but the sun is setting in a beautiful way over there in the west. I just done some whipper snippering yesterday and all the webs that were down have gone but I noticed Barbie didn't reset any in that freezing night last night. Let me just check up and see what little sister's up to. One thing I'll say about little sister is she's very quickly becoming big sister. I'm just going to show her the tweezers, see how she reacts. Oh yeah, watch out little sister. Oh yeah, look at that. Bit of back leg action. Whoa, she, oh, crikey, she's coming for me. No, you go down little sister. Please, I'm trying to get you away from being up near me. Please go down, down, down. I'll tell you this, um, don't mess with little sister. I think if she had the chance, she'd be quite a, quite a nice little girl. Look at that, wow. I'm just trying to get her further down. Okay, that's better. Yep, that's where I want her. Okay, I'm back on to Barbie again. And as I said before, it is a vulnerable time for these spiders. They can't do their redback spider things while they're in this process. I'm not going to disturb her and see if she'll stop doing what she's doing. And what I might do this time is I'll let her keep this egg sack for let's say maybe four or five weeks. I'll keep an eye on it, of course. And then I'll pull it out. And I just maybe wanted to have a feeling that at least she's got a family because all this year, I've been quite, well, let's just say I've been controlling her family, okay? Uh, she's got to know the tweezers, and I'm wondering whether Redback Spiders actually can remember uh, things. I think she's actually learning what I'm all about. Mind you, in this spider home here, she has got the freedom to just leave if she wants. Okay, it's just out in the garden. If she's not happy here, she'll go. And as we've seen, she has stayed here since I've put her in here, and we've watched her grow up. But as we can just see her there, doing her um, red back spider egg sacky thing, I dare say she's a bit startled that she's being watched. I dare say she would prefer to do this in total privacy. But no, we'd like to see this, and uh, it is actually really curious that she's doing this at this time. I always thought... They did this process at night because the other times when I've seen this done in the redback spider tanks, it's usually been a nighttime thing. So this has caught me by surprise. I'm just hoping all that bubble was highly educational. We've got to say that way these days on YouTube. It's a very different YouTube versus quite a few years back. I've witnessed the redback spiders laying egg sacs uh, quite a few times. It's actually a very hard process to get on camera for the whole process right in the middle of frame. Uh, when the spiders were in the spider tank one and two, I would see them do this often right on the edge of frame, never in the right spot. I couldn't like whisper in the spider's ear, hey, psst. the frame and the area where I want you to put your egg sack is right here. Uh, I tried to, you try to guess where they're gonna do it. It's quite often a, a mystery what they're gonna do and where they're gonna do it. 
But what they tend to do is they will weave up uh, part of the egg sac in a sense like the part that we're looking at we're looking at it all upside down z's at the moment and then as you can see she's clutching it and she's pumping in the eggs and using her backside i can't do real spider talk i just have to speak in layman's language here and it's quite a peculiar thing to see because when people see this sped up it looks a bit unusual and sometimes i've shown this process sped up and then you get all sorts of funny comments on YouTube and in her case she might have just finished doing the laying of the eggs and patting in it and now she'll be moving into doing a whole stack of weaving and the other thing you'll notice is on her backside which would have been very pumped up it'll look all shriveled up like you know when you have your hand in water and it comes out all wrinkly well the back end of the spider tends to look very wrinkled up and here she is she's coming up to this side so while she's doing this she will not move away from that zone she knows I'm here I've got a light on her and she's just set to do this task it's one of these things that the spiders are programmed to do and um, yes I will leave this one with her because in a funny way I look back over my shoulder here at how many egg sacs she's laid up this year this is number nine and I wonder because she hasn't been left of a clutch of eggs, maybe she's just overproducing egg sacs. Uh, because taking the egg sacs away is actually unnatural for her. Okay, so I could be forcing her to to be very, how would you say it, prolific in laying egg sacs. But it's a fascinating thing to watch. Normally you would never see this because it would be done in recluse areas where you're never going to see. And it's just one of those little wonderments of nature that is actually a stunning thing to witness and I think from here on she'll move at a much faster pace and she'll get on with her business and she probably wants me to go away and leave her alone and take that light away because she wants a privacy because she's a girl it was just by chance I opened up to see if there was an egg sac there and there she was right in the midst of making a red back spider egg sac stunning to see if you're wondering, little sister was climbing back up again. I'll just get her to go back down very carefully, of course. Then you go, little sister, away from me, please. So there you go, one of Australia's most deadly spiders laying up an egg sac and weaving the web around it to protect it. And it can take, now look, it can be anywhere between four, look, it could be two months, it could be eight weeks before the egg sac hatches. It really all depends on environmental conditions and things. And we seem to be having a fairly, I'll call it dampish, wettish sort of spring. Uh, this time last year, we had all the big fires were kicking off this, you know, at this time, and it was actually very hot and dry. We had a horrible, hot, dry summer. In the same way, like, in a sense, America has just gone through all the Northern Hemisphere there and all the fires and whatnot. It's funny, I... I saw what was going on there with the, you call them wildfires, we call them bushfires, and I just thought, wow, I can relate to smoky skies and seeing San Francisco all smoked out. Um, that was going on all through Australia, uh, just prior to you guys copying it. So, um, yeah, it's unusual to, to be coming around to these new seasons without having smoke in the air and everything cast with a yellow smoky sort of look to it as it was last year. And I think uh, we'll leave Barbie here to her privacy and her newborn family, which have yet to hatch, of course. <laughs> but don't you worry, I'll be in command of that. Okay, I'll get the lid back on. I'm sure Barbie is going to be really happy that she's going to be put back into darkness here. And uh, then I'll go and very quickly show you what's happening on Spider Tank 3. Okay, in a dark corner of my garage, I have the Redback Spider Tank 3 with Barbie's Redback Spider Egg Sacks 6, 7 and 8 under time-lapse scrutiny. There's also a Black House Spider Egg Sack in there as well. One thing I'm noticing is one of the Redback Spider Egg Sacks of Barbie's, the first one which will hatch, is starting to get quite dark, a different colour to the other two, and the Black House Spider Egg Sack has really puffed up you know it looks like it's not far from bursting open and there'll be a stack of little black spiders 
coming out of that one if everything works out because it's a great unknown you don't know what's going to happen in here spider tank 3 is going to be very different to spider tank 1 and 2 uh, it's always a bit of a a risk you i could get something magical out of this or i could get nothing yeah you know, you've just got to go through and shoot it and do it and just see what you get i'm sure whatever happens in there we're going to learn something that's the most important thing this piece of footage of a redback spider making a redback spider egg sac from go to woe was shot in spider tank 2 and it was on a night where i decided to backlight a clutch of spider eggs and I wanted to get footage of what goes on inside a spider egg and I never expected the redback spider to lay up an egg sac that night but of course you're dealing with spiders as I said before I can't whisper into spiders ears and say dearie the frame is here I need you to put your egg sac right here because then it's going to look spectacular can you do that for me little one I'll give you an extra beetle if you do but of course the spider just does what it wants to do because it's never going to ever listen to what I've got to say and I don't think spiders have ears or maybe they do. So it's a piece of footage of a redback spider making an egg sac right on the edge of frame. So many times I've missed this moment. It's always been half on frame or up in the corner of a frame. I've never been lucky enough to get it right in the middle and it's funny that today when I looked inside Barbie's home well I thought wow there we go I can come in and I can put the camera right on this but we were looking at everything upside down Z well maybe it's because she's an Australian spider everything here is upside down and I was thinking about all the amazing nature docos that you watch these days they've sort of become really really amazing in the advent of good CGI we won't go down that bunny hole right now uh, maybe you might have something to say about that. But what I really notice is they always heavily tinker with augmented sounds. That is a driving soundtrack to sort of tell the story and also other Foley sounds to make it sound completely incredible. And I thought to myself, if you were going to hear the natural sounds of this redback spider making an egg sac, what could I put in there to make it sound more interesting? Do I put like sounds like this, like... Or do I put in sounds like, you know, something scratching or something? And that would be totally fake because in the end, and we'll finish the video off with the real sound, well, guess what? It's completely silent. Okay, there's no incredible sort of sounds at all, as unfortunate as that sounds.